Coach, in the spring, you talked about how your special teams philosophy is a bit different than other people's. Just how have you seen that come to fruition here in fall camp, and how do you think you guys are performing during it? I think it's been good. You know, you never know until you play that first game. I've I'm, I'm been doing this long enough to know that practice matters, but certainly what we put on the field will, be, will speak for itself. How far do you think you've come since spring, just in, in terms of special teams progress? I think, you know, there's just always normal development, just like you have on offense and defense. I think it's the same thing. When you first get here, you're just trying to implement the – you know, how, how you do things, how you operate, and then, and then you grow from there. Are there any parts of that where you feel, you know, the best about how far they've come? Any no. specific parts of special teams? No, not unit? necessarily. Again, I, you know, we'll, I'll ask me after the first game and I'll let you know. You also in spring talked about wanting to bring competition in for Camden, and you did that. What mm -hmm. have you seen from the new kickers and even the punters, I guess? Yeah, I think they're doing a great job. You know, we've got a really healthy competition at kickoff and at field goal. Um, so that they've, they've done exactly what I wanted. I wanted to bring in some guys that could actually compete and play at this level. And there's a couple other guys here that, that have experience and definitely have pushed him for sure. For Adam and Ross in particular, Joe, what were you selling them on? Because I realize scholarships are a little tight and you know, it's an opportunity to compete, yes, for a job potentially, but at the same token, they had other options in the portal. What was your message to the two of them? Yeah, I think Oregon really sells itself, you know, when it, when it comes to the opportunity. You know, we didn't have a punter on the roster, so there was certainly opportunity there. Um, and, and then, you know, just again, what, what Oregon brings, the, the little, they're both a little bit different stories. You know, Adam has punted 164 times in, in football games. He's been on full scholarship before, so that really wasn't, uh, you know, his motivation. He wanted a chance to be, to be seen on the big stage because his goals are to go to the NFL, and, and my last two punters went to the NFL, and so he knew that. So there was a little bit of connection that way. And, and then Ross wanted an opportunity to be, to, to be at a higher level. He was at a junior college and just wanted to get some around some higher level competition because he felt like that would make him better. On those onside and pooch kick drills, how have you seen the communication kind of improve through fall camp? We've seen some guys getting down on themselves for, for some missing some calls. How have you seen that communication improve? Yeah, I mean, it's grown. That's why you do it every day, right? We start practice every single day with it so that when we're in that situation uh, in games, it's not a surprise. You know, we, we have only have two goals on special teams, own the ball, no penalties. And we, I figure if, if own the ball is going to be the most important thing, then we can't just talk about it. we got to work on it. So it's been good. In, in those positional drills, you have you know, positional coaches going out mm -hmm. and teaching those drills. How do you how did you divvy that up, and how did you determine this guy will do this and that guy will do that? Yeah, so it's it's really based on what they do on each unit. So just like offense and defense, you, you don't just have a defensive coordinator and then no other position coaches, right? You have a corners coach and a linebackers coach and a defensive line coach, as an example. So we just do the same thing on special teams. So if we're on punt, we have a guy that's in charge of the shield. We have a guy that's in charge of the right guard, right tackle, left guard, left tackle, and so on and so forth. So it's it's in conjunction with the positions that they coach on those units. Where are you guys at in that kicking competition? How close are you to being able to let these guys know, like, hey, you're the starter, you're you're next in line? What's today? Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. So probably 10 days away. <laughs> what more do you need to see to make that call? I'm going to have as big of a sample size as I can before we make a decision. You know, so so more more kicks, more opportunities. Is it new kick return, punt return as well? Yeah, I think I think I really think that will be by by committee. You know, I think we've got a bunch of guys that are, that are that are really uh, capable that I'm really excited about. So yeah, it, not not because I'm trying to hide anything, just because I think it'll be by committee. I really do. So you think you'd rotate that like, game by game, even kick off even, kick even off? within the game? Yeah, like who's who's fresh, who's the most fresh, who's hot that day? You know, that kind of thing. I really feel like we have a number of guys in both those areas that are, that could be pretty effective depending on the situation. Is that something you've done before? Um. Yeah, a little bit. At Memphis, I did it a little bit. I didn't didn't do it as much at, at Penn State. It, it really just depends on the number of guys you have that you think are, are capable of, of doing what you want them to do. How do you go about just selecting who the potential candidates are there when you get here? I mean, did you, did you kind of look and see who'd done it before in high school, college, or what was the process of even um, figuring that out? No, not, no I, I didn't want to have any clouded vision, so I didn't look at anything that anybody had done before. You just kind of know by the, by the position that they play. Um, and then talk to them, you know, do you guys want to return kicks, you want to return punts, and then literally those, the drills you guys referenced earlier, that's all charted. So every single time you catch a ball, miss a ball, don't communicate, communicate, it's all on a big chart. And then I can look at the chart and say, okay, Seven McGee is 97% on the ball. He's only had one drop all, all I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that would be an, an example of one. Um, and then if, if the next guy is 91% and the next guy is 82%, then I know that 97 and 91 are going to be my top two. You know what I mean? As long as they're, as long as they're capable in the other areas. You worked with Dan both at Memphis and ASU. Yep. In between, he had that short stint at Bama to make that change, and, and obviously Sam Houston as well. How did you see the Bama experience in particular changing? Because it's only a couple of years, but he talked about that basically being like a PhD in college football. 
Yeah, I think just like any coach, I think growth, you know, as, as you grow and mature, uh, probably just like you do in any business, just just see them grow and mature and, and maybe see things done at, at a really high level and, and adapt some of those things to the to his personality already. You know, you got to be you. He's, he's not Nick Saban. He's not Kirby Smart. So I haven't seen drastic changes, but seen him maybe you know, pick and choose things that I've seen things from ASU, from Memphis, stuff that from Georgia, from Alabama, and kind of bring it all together and make it your own. I haven't been with him at Memphis. How do you see Sophia's incident there with, with cancer and her, her bout there yeah, you know, shape, the, shape them and, and how she's a co-partner in, the, in all of this enterprise and in particular at that time how, how hard that was yeah all of our wives are this this is this is this is a, not a this isn't a job this is our lives so um, all the wives are very very close you know there, there was a really tight-knit wives group at Memphis and, and when Sophia was going through her cancer you know they all had different days they would take them food over they, they would get together and package do, do package meals and those kind of things and take her to her treatments and stuff so um, it's been awesome to, to watch it's been it's been you know I, I knew Dan would be a, a good husband and a good father in the first place because that that's who he is and, and just supporting his wife the way that I think any of us would you talk about that kick return punt return unit have been there have there been guys that have tried to get in the conversation to be in there that you kind of weed out and you say, hey, this, yes, this may I'm be not pestered you. every day by all the <laughs> defensive linemen, all the linebackers. Yes, everybody wants to be the kick returner and punt returner. So, yeah, most of them are just joking around. But yeah, everybody wants to do it. But you know, it's got to be. We're going to put people on the field that 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 we number one that we trust that are going to own the ball and, and put us in good situations, and then number two that that can make plays for us. You know that Dan coached both DBs and special teams when he was first getting started. I, I'm sure he's told me that before. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Earlier in his life, everybody refers to him as Daniel. Mm -hmm. I heard that it may have been Graham who kind of shifted that at the college level. You were there. Was that kind of it? Did you ever refer to him as Daniel? I've never heard anybody but his wife refer to him as Daniel, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure, to be honest with you. He was with Graham at Pitt before, before I got with him, so it may have happened there. Have you seen Jamal or Bennett, one of those two guys, kind of take ownership of that nickel spot? Yeah, both of them. You know, they're both, I think you'll see both of them probably play a, a pretty pretty fair amount, um, you know, not to put necessarily put a number on it, but maybe even like 50-50. I think they're rotating at safety some too. So you know, they're both just really versatile players, great communicators. And I think it's in our benefit to have them both on the field at the same time. So if one of them's at the nickel, you'll probably see one at the safety and vice versa. Who else has been in the mix repping there besides those two? Uh, JJ Greenfield's rep there a little bit. And uh, Kamari Terrell, a young guy's rep there as well. And then Marco. I don't know how to say his last name the right way. I don't want to butcher it, but uh, all five of those guys have gotten the reps. But certainly, you know, Jamal and, and Bennett being older and just having a little bit more experience have really stood out more so. But the other guys have done a good job. Kamari's an exciting young player. Now you've got 10 days, obviously, to still prepare, Joe. But with what the matchup will be, particularly to you, to your guys mm -hmm. in that week one, when you have probably the most talented tight end room other than your own in America and with the Bowers in particular, mm -hmm. what do you, how do you go about preparing your guys for the physical challenge that that's going to be? Yeah, I don't know if you can. I, I don't think it's any disparagement to our team to say that that's the best tight end room in the country. I think it pre pretty clearly is, right? Um, I don't know if you can. You just try to create those matchups as much as you can in practice and, you know, try to th – their their guys are also receiver types. So is there, are they a tight end? Are they a receiver? You know, so we have a couple couple of the bigger guys, Kyler Casper and, and Chapman, that you can that you can uh, match them up with and T. Ferg we can match them up with. So you try to create those matchups as much as you can in practice to, to play the game before the game, but I don't know that – I don't know that you can replicate Brock Bowers personally. I want to go back to question. going back to Kamari. His name keeps coming up this fall. What is it about him that's kind of caught your eye? I think he's just a young, flashy player. You know, you, when you've been doing this as long as, as as I have, you can tell when a kid has the skill set that you want. There's still plenty to learn. He certainly hasn't arrived by by any stretch, but but you can just tell that they have the skill set and the mindset that that at some point that they're they're going to be really good players.